In this part of antiarrhythmics, we will see the types of arrhythmia based on the features of arrhythmia appearing on electrocardiograms. We will see seven types of uh, cardiac arrhythmia, how uh, it is appearing in uh, electrocardiogram. Okay, so this is the electrocardiogram of a healthy person. You can see the P wave, QRS wave and the T wave. The first type of cardiac arrhythmia is premature ventricular beat. In this we can see that there is a premature beat which is arising in the ventricle. And that is shown as inverted QRS wave on the electrocardiogram. So just this, ideally this is the, this, here the QRS wave should appear, but before, just before this QRS contraction, the ventricular contraction, uh, there is premature contraction which is appearing over here. The next type is paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, which is also known as PSVT. So in this, basically this is happening because of the re-entry uh, cause that we had seen. We had seen the three mechanisms of re-entry. So this PSVT can happen because of any mechanism of uh, re-entry, any type of re-entry. Here what happens, why is it called supraventricular? When we say it's supraventricular, it means just above the ventricles, just above the two lower chambers of the heart. So from there, the uh, uh, increased heart rate is starting, the tachycardia is starting. And if you remember in re-entry, generally the AV node is something where there was some issue in the tissue and that's why the re-entry was happening, tachycardia was happening. So this is like just above the ventricle which is causing tachycardia and that's why it is called paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. The electrocardiogram looks somewhat like this. Next is atrial fibrillation. So in atrial fibrillation, basically the atria beat irregularly. Uh, its type of contraction is not uh, usual. So here you can see occasionally uh, there is absence of P wave. Uh, the P wave disappears because of irregular, uh, irregular type of contraction of atria. QRS complexes occur uh, irregularly. Uh, in this graph, if you see QRS wave, they, they are appearing at a slower rate. The distance between them is very high. Uh, electrical activity between QRS complexes shows small undulations. So here you can see between the two QRS waves, there are some small, small peaks, which is represented uh, by electrical activity in the electrocardiogram. So these are small, small peaks hote hai, uh, because of electric, uh, the electrical activity which we see in ECG. Hai. They are actually because of the fibrillatory activity in the atria. So atria jo hai, wo irregularly contract kar raha hai, wo iska ek key feature hai. Next type hai atrial flutter. So is mein kya difference hai? Atria regularly contract kar raha hai. The type of contraction is good, but it is faster. Heart rate is faster. Okay, uska contraction proper hai, jaisa hona chahiye, but uska heart rate fast hai. Zada uh, beat kar raha hai. Now, at, in atrial flutter, if you see, uh, there are two types. Okay, here there is first type which is known as atrial flutter with variable AV conduction. So, what we mean by variable AV conduction means, uh, there is atrial contraction which is increased, right? Ek ki jage do bar atria contract ho raha hai. But ventricle do bar nahi contract ho raha hai. Wo apna normally ek hi bar contract ho raha hai. So that is why 2 is to 1 ka ratio ho gaya. So it is 
atria is to ventricle contraction is 2 is to 1 it's not 1 is to 1 right so this is called uh, atrial flutter with variable av conduction the atria beat rapidly and the ventricular rate is variable it's not exactly same as atria here you can see there are multiple p waves uh, compared to qrs waves qrs waves are lesser compared to p waves coming to second type atrial flutter with 1 is to 1 av conduction here what is happening atria ka heart rate to fast hua hai beating rate fast hua hai exactly in the same proportion ventricle ka beating rate bhi increase ho gaya hai so uh, if atria is uh, atria beat is increased from 1 to 2 ventricle is also beating now two times so there is 1 is to 1 ratio of this contraction if a drug showing uh, slowing the uh, rate of atria flutter is administered one is to one atrioventricular conduction can occur so uh, agar koi drug dete hai atrial flutter mein jahan uh, atria ka contraction rate reduce kar raha hai wo drug so the, uh, the, we can you know get one is to one atrioventricular conduction which is at least better than atrial flutter with variable AV conduction. So initially to control this variable AV conduction, first of all the drug is given to get 1 is to 1 AV conduction. Next is monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. This is in this identical wide QRS waves are appearing at regular rate. So this is very important to understand. The, iska naam kuch aur suggest karta hai aur actually mein ye kuch aur hai. So we have to understand each term of its name. Like uh, first of all there is wide QRS wave. So we all can see here QRS ka width increase ho gaya hai. Ye bahut sharp hota hai in normal cases. Yahan pe ye bahut broad ho gaya hai. Right? So because of this we feel ki agar ye broad hua hai so how can it be tachycardia, right? Means heart rate to slow ho jana chahiye agar ye broad hua hai to. No, but if you see before this QRS wave and after this QRS wave, there is no plateau uh, phase. So that's why if I tell you in healthy person, one QRS wave yaha appear ho raha tha, second QRS wave yaha appear ho raha tha. But in this case, what is happening in this tachycardia, in this much time, there are three QR, uh, QRS waves which are appearing. So basically, it's a tachycardia. Although its width increase hua hai, but its number bhi increase hua hai. Within that much time, more number of contractions, ventricular contractions are there. That's why it is a tachycardia. And it is happening in the ventricle, so ventricular tachycardia. Now another term is monomorphic. Why is it called monomorphic? That means all these wide QRS they appear same. Unka jo structure hai wo same hai. Aisa disorganized nahi hai. Okay. That's why they are called monomorphic occurring at a regular rate. Regular rate means not 72 beats per minute. Regular rate means if you see iske baad jaise ye next QRS aaya hai exactly waise ye 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 sab aaye hai. They all are occurring at the uniform rate. That is what they mean by uh, regular rate over here. So the heartbeat is increasing. Number of heartbeats are increasing but they are wide the QRS. QRS waves are wide and they are occurring faster. Okay. The next type is torsage stepointis. So here in this, what is happening? There is very long QT interval. That is, if this is Q, QRS wave ka Q, iske baad T aane mein, there is a long time. It is taking a long time. This distance is increasing this distance is increasing okay now if you see another feature each successive beat has a different morphology previous slide mein humne dekha tha sare beats uniform the yahan pe you can see har ek beat 
अलग दिख रहा है राइट दे हैव डिफरेंट मॉर्फोलॉजी सो दैट्स वाई इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज नोन एज पॉलीमोर्फिक वेंट्रिकुलर टैकी कार्डिया द लास्ट टाइप इज वेंट्रिकुलर फाइब्रिलेशन so in ventricular fibrillation there is no specific feature for qrs wave or t wave what we see is disorganized electrical activity in between the peaks there are always disorganized electrical activity which is making it you know uh, the electrocardiogram very uh, non uniform so this is the uh, electrocardiogram feature of uh, ventricular fibrillation and this is one of the most harmful type of arrhythmia so with that we have seen almost uh, seven types of arrhythmia premature ventricular beat paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation atrial fibrillation atrial flutter in atrial flutter we have seen with 1 is to 1 uh, av conduction and uh, with variable av conduction monomorphic ventricular tachycardia and torsed day point hi everyone in this part of video we will see anti arrhythmic molecules specifically class 1 anti arrhythmics the anti arrhythmic drugs are divided or classified into four classes class 1 which is sodium blocker it is further subdivided into class 1a 1b and 1c इनका क्या फीचर है क्या डिफरेंस है वो हम लोग बाद में देखेंगे 1a is intermediate sodium blocker 1b is rapid sodium blocker and 1c is slow sodium blocker class 2 is beta blockers class 3 is potassium blocker and class 4 is calcium blocker one important thing to remember over here is hum ye class jo hai interchange nahi kar sakte hain we cannot say that class 1 is beta blocker its class 1 is always sodium blocker class 2 is always beta blocker and same applicable to all the type of classification used for anti arrhythmic this is known as von williams classification so we'll see all the class of drugs one by one but before that i request you to go through the action potential video in which you will be able to see how the uh, ions are involved in action potential which ions are involved and uh, then only you will understand how the drugs are acting on those ions and what changes are happening okay so ye samajhne ke liye please pehle uh, action potential uh, ka video dekhiye coming to class 1 membrane depressant drugs uh, why it is also known as membrane depressant drugs because they have the ability to stabilize the membrane okay membrane ko stabilize karta hai usko shift karta hai towards more negative potential so agar aap action potential ka graph dekhenge usme wo graph ko towards down shift kar raha hai ye uh, the drugs from this class class 1 they shift the membrane to more negative potentials these drugs bind to sodium channel and they block its function uh, that's how they prevent the sodium conduction so if you remember the action potential the first step of uh, action potential is sodium influx which is blocked by the drugs from class 1 there are many other uh, many drugs in this class class 1 which show which are actually local anesthetics so there are multiple local anesthetics which are also inhibiting sodium channels and they also act as anti arrhythmics sodium channel on the perkin j fiber they exist in three states now this is important ki ye jo channels hote hain wo teen different state mein uh, exist karte hain first hai rested stage uh, rested state mein kya hota hai the uh, sodium channel is actually closed to uh, near the resting potential but they are able to be opened by stimulation or depolarization 
सो so, वो रेस्टिंग स्टेज में है जो जब उसको इस वक्त अगर उसको स्टिमुलेशन मिला तो वो वापस एक्शन पोटेंशियल क्रिएट कर सकता है आई I मीन mean, वापस ओपन हो सकता है सेकेंड स्टेज होता स्टेट होता है एक्टिवेटेड स्टेट सो एक्टिवेटेड स्टेज में क्या होता है द दे अलाउ द चैनल्स दे अलाउ द सोडियम आयंस टू पास सिलेक्टिवली थ्रू द मेम्ब्रेन बेसिकली चैनल ओपन है इस स्टेट में एंड लास्ट इज इन एक्टिवेटेड इसमें अगेन ये क्लोज है बट दे आर ऑल्सो अनेबल टू टू बी ओपन वो ओपन भी नहीं हो सकता है अनलाइक रेस्टेड रेस्टेड में क्या था क्लोज था बट वो ओपन हो सकता है बेस्ड ऑन द स्टिमुलेशन यहाँ पे वो क्लोज है और वो ओपन भी नहीं हो सकता है नो वाई दीज थ्री स्टेट्स आर इम्पॉर्टेंट इन दिस बिकॉज द एफिनिटी ऑफ एंटी अरेथमिक ड्रग्स टू द रिसेप्टर फॉर दिस आयन चैनल सोडियम आयन चैनल इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द स्टेट ऑफ द चैनल कि चैनल कौन से स्टेट में है उस पर डिपेंड करेगा मॉलिक्यूल का एफिनिटी यर वी कैन सी लोअर द एफिनिटी फॉर आर चैनल्स एंड हायर द एफिनिटी फॉर ए एंड आई चैनल्स दैट इज एंटी क्लास वन का एंटी अरिदमिक ड्रग्स जो है उनका एफिनिटी रेस्टेड चैनल्स के लिए कम है कंपेयर टू एक्टिवेटेड एंड इन एक्टिवेटेड चैनल्स के so as we have seen in the classification class 1 drugs uh, the sodium blockers they are divided into further three subtypes that is 1a 1b and 1c so uh, this subtype is depending on the dissociation from sodium channel wo kitna fast ya kitna slow sodium channel se dissociate ho raha hai us pe depend karta hai ye classification so if they are uh, having intermediate rate of dissociation drug gaya bind hua sodium channel ko aur wo intermediate rate se dissociate ho raha hai us channel se so uh, uh, this is lengthening the refractory period and the drugs Falling in this category are quinidine, procainamide, disdisopyramide. This is class one A. Class one B is are the drugs which dissociate rapidly from the sodium channel. वो bind होने के बाद receptor से बहुत ही quickly dissociate हो जाते हैं. They produce little, if any. चेंज इन एक्शन पोटेंशियल ड्यूरेशन सो उनका बहुत ज्यादा सिग्निफिकेंट चेंज नहीं होता है इम्पैक्ट नहीं होता है एक्शन पोटेंशियल के ड्यूरेशन पे द ड्रग्स फॉलोइंग अंडर दिस कैटेगरी आर लिडोकेन टोकेनाइड मैक्सिलेटेड द थर्ड सब टाइप इज वन सी विच डिसोशिएट स्लोली फ्रॉम द चैनल दे विल कीप बाउंड टू द सोडियम चैनल फॉर लॉन्गर टाइम the drugs are enkinaid lorcanaid and morisicin so the, the choice of drug will depend on the type of arrhythmia kya problem hai heart mein uh, heart beat mein uske according choice of drug will be there now we will see each of this drug from class 1a in detail so first is quinidine Uh, the effect of all these three drugs quinidine procainamide and disopyramide are same on action potential so what is the effect on action potential they slow down the phase 0 depolarization so this phase 0 uh, this will be slowed down it will be tilted a bit so uh, if it is slowed down it will be tilted a bit it will not be sharp uh, like steep uh it prolongs action potential duration if it is tilted definitely this uh, duration will be increased so pure uh, du- uh, potential duration ka uh, poten- action potential ka duration increase ho jata hai and slows the conduction of course it slows the conduction and, and that's how it uh, slows down the phase uh, depolarization coming to effect on electrocardiogram so quinidine increases <coughs> pr and qt intervals that means the difference uh, the distance between p and r this distance will be increased and q and t 
this distance will be increased basically the uh, it is slowed down and that's why the distance is increased it tends to broaden qrs waves this qrs wave is also not a sharp peak it it is broadened changes in shape of t wave may be uh, seen reflecting effect of uh, on repolarization so repolarization pe bhi effect hota hai isliye t wave ka structure thoda modify ho jata hai these are the effects of quinidine on ecg if we talk about uh, procainamide it prolongs refractory period <coughs> uh qrx complex and qt interval this is prolong so again similarly ye broad ho jayega aur ye distance increase ho jayega in case of disopyramide again prolongation of tr interval and qrs broadening are less marked so these might be in lesser amount compared to these two drugs uh the site of tissue the uh, part of the heart which is uh, impacted by these drugs are atrial and ventricular tissue both so in both the chambers if there is any arrhythmia these drugs can be used if we talk about use of quinidine it is more effective in uh, uh, many atrial and ventricular arrhythmias uh but its use is very limited due to risk of some adverse events like torsed day point is uh, sudden sudden cardiac arrest or ventricular failure uh sorry vent- ventricular fibrillation idiosyncratic uh, angioedema that means the swelling in uh be- because of accumulation of fluid plasma uh, in any body part due to unknown reason vascular co- collapse or thrombocytopenia so thrombocytopenia is destruction of uh, platelet cells too much destruction so low number of platelet cells so these are some of the key uh, uh, adverse effects of quinidine due to which its use is very much limited other uh, adverse events are nausea diarrhea and vomiting for procainamide where is it used it is occasionally used to terminate monomorphic ventricular tachycardia so this will be the uh, type of uh, arrhythmia in which procainamide is generally used and some supraventricular arrhythmia uh, the key adverse event of procainamide is drug induced lupus this is like on the skin uh, the rashes are there it is one of the autoimmune disease which may may happen generally also but it can be drug induced also one of the drug which can induce lupus is procainamide disopyramide this is used as second line drug that means first some other treatment has to be given if that doesn't work then disopyramide can be given for prevention of uh, ventricular arrhythmia recurrence so if ventricular arrhythmia is happening again and again even after giving some other drug then disopyramide can be given uh, some key side effects of uh, disopyramide are anticholinergic type of effects so that means uh, if we talk about anticholinergic that means uh, it, uh, it mostly reduces the motility of uh, most of the you know tissues so dry mouth because it is reducing the secretion of saliva in the mouth blurred vision constipation because again the um, movement of the smooth muscles in gi is reduced and urinary retention so this is again due to smooth muscle uh, movement reduction so these are some anticholinergic type of adverse effect of di- disopyramide these are the structures of quinidine procainamide and disopyramide uh, this is quinidine where uh, they have two metabolites o dimethyl quinidine you can see here this o ch3 this methyl group is removed eliminated and this becomes oh so this is o dimethyl quinidine the another metabolite is oxy dihydroquinidine so here if you see it's c ch that means double bond is there so uh, it is saturated 
it becomes CH2 CH2 and the second carbon is hydroxylated so that's why oxy for hydroxy uh, hydroxy group and dihydro for this saturation where hydrogen are added to the two carbons so oxy dihydro quinidine these are the two metabolites they have one third activity of quinidine prokinamide is uh, metabolized it can be broken down from uh, this bond and this can lead to formation of para amino benzoic acid acid so this is like para amino benzoic acid this will become COOH uh, another metabolite is N acetyl prokinamide in which the whole molecule will be intact but on nitrogen atom acetyl group will be attached instead of hydrogen disopyramide in this again N D alkylation can happen as a metabolism 